Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk. This time, let's talk about the Cloverfield Paradox. So this movie's marketing campaign was kind of interesting, electing to run an ad during the Super Bowl, essentially stating that after the Super Bowl, this movie would be ready to watch on Netflix. So let me get this straight. The third film set in the Cloverfield universe would be available to watch on Netflix after the biggest sporting event in America? It's like Christmas came a second time, only in February. <laughs> well, not only did my Patriots get their asses kicked in the Super Bowl, this movie was also the biggest fuck you to any fan of the series. And I hesitate to call it a series at this point because none of the three films have connected in any meaningful, thoughtful way. And if the second film wasn't as good as it was, I'd probably be done with the franchise at this point. I know something about love. This movie stars Gugu Embath... Gugu Embathar... Okay, you know what? I tried. I don't speak Zulu, so we're just going to refer to her as Gugu from here. <laughs> so this movie stars Gugu, who I loved in Black Mirror, Daniel Bruhl, who I've hated in Civil War and Inglorious Bastards, in a good way, Elizabeth Debicki, who was pretty cool as Aisha in Guardians Volume 2, and Zhang Ziyi, who was probably one of the best parts of Rush Hour 2. That was unnecessary! You know, knocked out my feeling, girl. That's going to cost you. Bruh. With such a star-studded cast, I'm frankly disappointed that this film wasn't as good as it could have and should have been. The first two Cloverfield films were excellent, and this one falls harder than Bitcoin. Was that too much? Alright, I'm sorry. There's some alright acting here, but a lot of the script is weak, and they make some questionable narrative choices. For example, Zhang Ziyi's character only communicates in Mandarin Chinese, probably due to the actress's difficulty speaking English, understandable. However, not only does the crew understand her, they speak back to her in a mixture of Mandarin and English, and I'm just like, what? Are they attempting to be Firefly here? Because Firefly explained why Mandarin was spoken by non-Chinese characters. I mean, it would make much more sense if the international crew just understood each other's language, but they had to take it a step further and just randomly speak Chinese, and it just seemed like the producers were huge fans of Firefly, and, and no one would notice. The plot attempts, and I use that word lightly, to explain the origins of the monsters in the original film and the alien invaders of the second film. In this film, the nations of Earth are all prepping for war due to an energy crisis. Because that makes sense. All of your energy reserves are depleted, so of course you go to war and deplete them even further. And the stars of the film are sent to a space station that has the capability of producing infinite energy by manipulating space-time. In the course of doing so, the crew accidentally converges with an alternate dimension and or parallel universe, because this movie couldn't make up its mind, they're not the same. And this is the cause for the first film's Clover Monster and the second film's Alien Invasion. Or maybe not, as it is shown that Gugu's original dimension is the one being terrorized by Clover. Which means this movie doesn't make much sense, because I'm certain the first film was set in what was then the modern day. In that film, Earth was not prepping for war due to an energy shortage, and I'm fairly certain it was around 2008. So why did Gugu's husband have a post-iPhone smartphone? And even further, why did this movie include Clover but not the alien invaders of the second film? You're in space for Christ's sakes! You could have easily shown that mothership shown at the end of 10 Cloverfield Lane heading towards the Earth. It's little things like this that made me come to the conclusion that this film was not meant to originally be a part of the Cloverfield series and was only later haphazardly tied into the franchise with stupid shit like this scene. <laughs> If it weren't attempting to be a part of the Cloverfield franchise, I think this film could have been a serviceable sci-fi B-film, in the vein of the original Outer Limits. But as it stands, it isn't a great entry into the series and works very, very hard to earn a D from me. The weird narrative choices, poor execution of its plot, lack of explanations for literally anything, and terrible integration into the Cloverfield franchise outweigh and waste what is a very decent cast. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Talk. 
If you like this episode and you want to see more like this, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking that little red button and then clicking the bell icon so that you will get notifications for whenever I release something, which is typically, you know, a couple videos every week. I make Let's Plays and I do more of this series. So until next time, guys, it's been your friendly neighborhood Birdman, and I'll see you later.